Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing Strix Point and a very different design philosophy that AMD will be taking with its Zen 5 microprocessor architecture. As, yep, it is a very different approach compared to what we saw with both Zen 3 as well as Zen 4. Zen 4 is going to be basically kind of a continuation with Zen 3. It's going to take the same design philosophies, but obviously crank things up to number 11. We're going to see improvements in IP see obviously the shift to a new platform along with ddr5 memory all of that is going to mean that uh, zen 4 is going to be considerably more performance but you can almost think of a zen 5 as a kind of from the ground up design while we're going to certainly see some of the inspiration from older Zen processors still be in play here after all it's not like you know these cpus are going to run on turnip juice or something like that Ultimately, AMD will be shaking things up considerably. Strix Point is an APU based on Zen 5, which is also, of course, going to be produced on TSMC's free NM process. And according to what um, MoPC, which I'll link in the video description, are stating, Zen 5 is going to be uh, utilizing a big little design, which is technically not the right verbiage. It should actually be heterogeneous for its architecture. But I think at this point, you know, big little are so prevalent in just, you know, people's understanding. A lot of people are calling it big little or, you know, big small or whatever term you want to use, even though, again, it technically should be heterogeneous. But getting back to my point, I suppose. So this is going to feature eight larger cores and four smaller ones for its APU, along, of course, with an RDNA class IP GPU. AMD, well, there's already been leaks that uh, CPUs in the future from AMD will actually feature a small iGPU, uh, again, based on RDNA. So this does make sense that we'll see a kind of similar approach for an APU. But the question is, of course, how will this affect desktop? After all, this is, again, an APU. So it could simply be for laptops only, and we won't see this design make its way through to desktop. It's not 100% clear yet. Also, another note is that this... Uh, website is stating that Warhol is cancelled and again I put out my information a few days ago that I was hearing Warhol was dead so I don't know whether they got that information from mine or their own sources um, but a second person has reached out to me and told me that yes Warhol is no longer a thing although I can't get 100% solid confirmation it's a couple of people are pretty certain it's gone but at this point I'm waiting for a third person to get back to me to confirm that Warhol is no longer going to be released the reasons, as I mentioned in my previous video, are pretty obvious. Basically, silicon shortages are just being a royal pain in the butt. And obviously, it's not like uh, the shift to 6NM is going to really help things simply because 6NM is basically 7NM, uh, you know, in terms of how... Uh, uh, TSMC's fabs work and then you add even further complications to that like it's not going to be that much more performance in let's say games and it's still going to mean that AMD therefore are probably going to be a little bit behind in games compared to Alder Lake but they're going to still be ahead in, um, in multi-threading tasks let's say you know doing like 3D rendering or whatever and they probably just don't feel like it's worth it but again don't take that as confirmation so I can tell you that I am hearing that Zen 5 is a very different approach, not just because of the big slash small design or heterogeneous design of its architecture. I'm trying to get a little bit more solid information bef for, uh, before I put out an exclusive on that in the next like two or three days. I kind of delayed that because I was trying to get a little bit more information, but then this article dropped. So I did want to discuss it because several of you have DM'd me about it. Thanks, by the way, to those who have. Uh, but yeah, from my understanding, Zen 4 is basically an evolution of Zen 3. Again, there are obviously fundamental changes such as uh, DDR5 memory support and IPC gains and that type of thing. However, when it comes to um, Zen 5, it is very much a very different architecture. And this same approach is also seemingly from what AMD are doing with graphics as well. RDNA 3, for example, brings chiplets to the equation and other architectural improvements, but ultimately it's not radically different to my understanding anyway compared to RDNA 2. RDNA 4, though, it can largely be thought of as a very different design, and it needs to be given what um, NVIDIA will be hitting AMD with when uh, they release Hopper in a couple of years. So I, I definitely think graphics are going to be changing significantly when that happens. 
Ultimately, Zen 5 is going to be very, very impressive. But I think that Intel are going to be putting a ton of pressure on AMD over the next few years. I'm hearing that um, Alder Lake is pretty decent, but architectures after Alder Lake are really where Intel kind of start to shine, especially in gaming with architectures such as Raptor Lake. I think Intel have a lot to prove, honestly, but I mean, really what's holding Intel back with Old Lake, to my understanding, is their 10 and then process. It's still, it's going brr, but it's barely going brr. In future, though, uh, 7NM apparently is actually a really good architecture. And you can't directly compare, of course, TSMC's 7NM versus Intel's 7NM because they are quite different from one another. But long story short, I think Intel will be on a pretty good road to recovery. But in the meanwhile, AMD are giving them a good kicking, of course. Um, but AMD will definitely need everything it can get by the time Zen 4 and Zen 5 launch. Also... There is a major update for NVIDIA, and this one is actually going to be quite important for gamers as well as miners as well. In mid-May, we will start to see the shipment of the Mining Light GPUs. For those who missed this news, basically, you know, we saw the RTX 3060 originally launch with mining limitations, but stuff happened, i.e. NVIDIA accidentally did an oopsie, and then it just kind of started to go from there. But NVIDIA are now pinky swearing that they will fix these issues in the future. So certain cards, well, basically all the cards, should I be using the correct words, such as the 3070, the 3080, which of course have already been released, are going to get slight, slight variants. They're not going to see, at least to my understanding, any difference in specifications. So the number of CUDA cores, the clock frequencies, the memory configuration, all is going to be identical. So don't feel mad if you own a 3080, for example, uh, your card is not going to suddenly feel worse against these new variants. However, what they will do is implement... Uh, basically, a couple of things. The first is that they're going to have resizable bar support from the get-go, so you won't need to flash your GPU. The second difference, as you probably guessed by now, is a limitation on mining performance, and this will also be for other cards, such as the RTX 3080 Ti 12 gigabyte model, which is, again, going to be released pretty soon as well. All of this, in my opinion, makes sense from the perspective of gaming. And also, let's face it, NVIDIA are going to be ka anyway because of the mining-focused uh, cards that they're releasing. Um, you know, I'm also being asked quite a lot, well, how, how long do I think it's going to take for these drivers or, you know, for this to be bypassed? And honestly, no one knows. Because ultimately, I don't really understand whether it's the same methodology that NVIDIA are employing or whether it's kind of a 2.0 version, which is going to take longer. I think, you know, just like anything, it's probably not hack proof. I'm sure in, you know, two, three, four, five months, whatever, someone will be able to bypass this limitation. And I probably am guessing too, it's not going to be for every single currency. Maybe I'm wrong here. But it might help to just dissuade people in the short term for jumping on one of these cards. And it's also going to lead to some very interesting questions too if you own an RTX, let's just say for the sake of argument, an RTX 3080. Will we see people who own one of the non-mining limited cards sell their GPU and then, well, rebuy in retail when they eventually they could? Because technically in the used market, at least in the short term, while, you know, mining is booming, yeah, those cards will be worth more. Another interesting thing is that, according to this information anyway, I'll link the video cards article in the description, there is going to be no discerning, you know, marking on the actual packaging to say that, yeah, by the way, we're limiting this, this is the mining light variant, i.e., yeah, if you're a miner, you might want to be careful from, let's say, mid-May, if you're purchasing those GPUs, just to make sure you don't get a mining light variant, because otherwise you could be a very sad panda. Mining is certainly very controversial, and, uh, you know, there is one thing I dislike about this, in that it does actually hamper people who are doing kind of small-scale mining. You know, you just kind of buy your own GPU and maybe doing a little bit of mining on your side, uh, sorry, on the side and just trying to make a little bit of cash back from, you know, your expensive GPU purchase. So that does kind of suck. But, well, yeah, I, I do understand why NVIDIA are doing this. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what type of impact, if any, 
this has on the market. Honestly, let's just say perfect scenario that it is uncrackable. Just let's just live in Disneyland for a moment and skip down the street with Mickey and Donald. Do, 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 do. Right, so now we're in Disneyland. Let's just assume that it can't be cracked at all. It's still going to take a while, obviously, for the shortages to be resolved because they are so, well, <laughs> so short. Um, and yeah, this is, of course, why that NVIDIA can release like tens of thousands of cards into the marketplace and they just get snapped up. At the moment, it's quite simply because of the miners grabbing them as well as everyone else under the sun. But the TAM, the total available market, the demand is just so damn high at the moment. However, I do think it will start to get better once the mining craze starts to die down a little bit. Another very important update for NVIDIA. It's very possible that we will see NVIDIA's next generation cards, RTX 40, codenamed Lovelace, release later than perhaps what we anticipated. So many did suspect that Lovelace would release quite early next year. In fact, even I've been hearing these rumors. But according to the very accurate co 7 Kimmy, this is just not going to happen. And we could actually see the card release, quote, much later than expected. Unfortunately, they didn't provide an exact release date as to when we will really see these cards. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised even if NVIDIA were not 100% certain about this. Again, I just want to reiterate that to my understanding, we were not going to see RDNA 3 release until the second half of next year. So realistically, NVIDIA are in no rush. Like, the market is not going to change. Let's assume even that there is a refresh of the RDNA 2 class GPUs, which, by the way, is not a rumor. I'm just saying that there was. It's not like it's going to be a tremendous difference. They might crank the clock frequencies up or whatever. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And, you know, NVIDIA could do the same thing. They could maybe do a small refresh of RTX 30. Again, obvious changes would be that they increase the clock frequency or crank the amount of RAM up, whatever. But I don't think even NVIDIA are that worried about doing that at the moment. The shortages are just meaning that people can't get hold of cards anyway. And so it's better for them just to kind of hold fire. I think ultimately it's much the same reason that Warhol could be cancelled. Because it's better just to service the people who are trying to get hold of stuff, not really annoy people. I mean, just for example, let's just go back to Warhol just for one second. Let's say that, you know, you've been waiting for the let's say 5900X, and then you manage to get one in a couple of months time, and then you start to see like leaked benchmarks of the 6900X or whatever it's called, you might be just a little bit upset. You might feel like drop kicking someone. And yeah, so I think this is probably one of the reasons we're gonna see this. I'll be interested to see what Nvidia's strategy is with Lovelace, uh, because to my understanding, it is not as performance as the you know rx 7000 series however uh, lovelace does seem to have let's say a few uh, a few positives of its own but i'm trying to uh, get a bit more detail before i put out a lovelace specific video but with that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video the normal stuff if you did like share comment and subscribe and thanks by the way to everyone who has subscribed recently the channel's kind of well got an kind of a lot of subscribers which is uh very humbling actually so again thanks to everyone who has been uh watching but i'll see you soon take care of yourselves stay safe bye for now